When you've finished working on your document, you will want to save or share your work. To save the document as an AF design file, tap the arrow to go back out to the home screen and view your live docs. Tap the document options and choose save to update a file that has previously been saved or save as to choose a storage location. If you want to share your work, you will need to export it. This saves the document as a different file type that can be utilized by other applications. To export, go back into the document and tap the document menu and then tap export. This will open the export dialog. There is a large choice of vector and raster file formats at the top and below are settings which are contextual to each format. Let's look at a raster format like JPEG. For each format, there are presets available. Here you can change the quality in the drop down menu. If you decrease the quality, the exported file will be smaller. You can check the file size at the bottom of the panel. You can also preview the document with the proposed settings and zoom in and out to make sure you're happy with the result. If you'd like to, you can modify the presets by dragging on the value for quality to find a setting that's right for you. Alternatively, you can tap to be more precise and input a specific number. You can also resample the exported image using the width and height options. By default, they are linked so the document remains aspect correct, but if you'd like to unlink them, just tap the chain icon. To relink them, tap it again. On the left, you can experiment with resampling methods. You could try by cubic or one of the Lantzos methods if you want sharper resampling and don't mind waiting a little longer for the export to complete. If you want to make your export suitable for web delivery, you might also want to enable progressive encoding, as this allows it to be previewed as it downloads. If you want to export your work in a vector format, you might choose PDF, EPS or SVG. These formats allow encoding of vector data, which is constructed from mathematical formulas rather than pixels like raster files. This allows for more flexibility when scaling content and these formats are excellent options for logos and graphics that might need to be printed in a wide range of sizes. When exporting to a vector format, you'll be able to adjust the DPI or dots per inch value, which determines the raster resolution relative to the physical dimensions of the document. If you intend to print your work, ensure the DPI value is a minimum of 300, otherwise 72 is fine for viewing digitally on a standard display or you would want to use 144 for retina or high DPI displays. Be mindful that any features or elements in the design unsupported by the PDF, SVG or EPS versions and specifications will be rasterized, so the DPI will affect the resolution of this content. We'll keep it at 300. On the right, you can change how vector objects are affected by the export. For example, toggling text to curves will convert the text into curves, whereas flattened transforms will reset objects' relative rotation and shear values to zero. If you're looking for a space-saving format, TIFF has a compression option to help reduce file size. It can increase export time, but the compress is lossless, so it can be really useful for keeping large resolution files small to save storage space. Once you've set your export settings, there are three different ways of exporting through this dialog. Tapping OK will bring up the Files dialog, allowing you to export directly to your iPad, iCloud storage, or another cloud storage service. Tapping Share in the bottom left of the dialog will bring up iPadOS's sharing menu, allowing you to send to other apps, airdrop to other users, and save to your photos library, files, or cloud storage. If you tap Edit Actions, you can add more options to this list. A third option is to use a drag-drop method. In this case, I'll tap-drag the TIFF button and swipe up from the bottom of the screen to view my apps. Now I can drag it over the Photos app until it opens and then release my finger, importing it directly into my photo album that I have here. You can do this with other apps too. For example, you can drag it into the Mail app and attach it to an email or drag it into Publisher and it will appear on the Place panel, ready for you to allocate to a picture frame. So that was a look at the different ways that you can export from Affinity Designer for iPad and some of the options that you might want to consider. Thanks for watching.